start. So hello everybody. I'm so pleased to introduce Hermat from uh, Germany and uh, he's been teaching shiatsu and giving treatment for dozen and dozen people and I'm so pleased to have Hermat today. And please introduce yourself. We'd like to hear about you. Yeah, thank you very much, Kumiko-san. Uh, I'm really appreciated to be part of your uh, events here uh, on coming December. I think it's 17, Saturday. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see you all. And uh, well, what to say about me? I mean, uh, I've, been pra I've been practicing Shiatsu for more than 35 years. I started training uh, actually with Ohashi Sensei. Uh, he came to Europe by that time uh, very often and uh, also had some institutes there. So I, by a friend, I came, uh, became to know him uh, and uh, I met him in uh, Munich twice and in several places a few times for my beginning of Shiatsu training. Wonderful. Yeah. And what did you like about shiatsu? Why did you fascinating about it? I mean, I came in contact with the uh, Asian martial arts uh, on one side, but also on the other side into energetics uh, because practicing Tai Chi and Qigong, but also became interested to follow the psychotherapy and uh, the uh, physiotherapy as well, the Western style and the Eastern style. And uh, my friend, friend of mine, a uh, doctor, uh, introduced me to the TCM stuff and the acupoints. And so, um, he told us about some few points. Uh, actually, those points in your background there, I see the U points. Mm -hmm. They no, the other side. Yes, <laughs> I started um, being uh, becoming interested in the in the uh, the points on the lumbar area, and so. Uh, another friend told me you have to go to uh, Ohashi Institute and learn shiatsu. Yeah, by, by the end of the training with Ohashi and with the European Shiatsu School, by then, it's been 30 years ago, I uh, got to know Pauline Sasaki Sensei. And uh, Pauline Sasaki, she became my mentor, my personal teacher, and uh, uh, my uh, close friend, and I started to follow wherever she was. I was uh, kind of traveling behind her through all through Europe mm -hmm. the first years. And then the later years, I started to translate her seminars. And then uh, by the late 90s, I started to travel to US to meet her mm -hmm. for uh, several personal trainings. And that took us then uh, 20 years along the way. and. Uh, so we had been very close to follow the shiatsu path. Wonderful. So what did you learn from Pauline? What's your, what did she give to you to inspire, to continue with your shiatsu practice? Yeah, I mean, um, actually, Pauline, on one side, mm -hmm. she... Uh, she she has been she had been a person which had been very close to uh, the the Zen culture mm -hmm. the the spirit of Zen. So because I'm a Zen monk, and I by then I'd been starting to uh, practice Zen with me with my uh, teacher and my old Zen master uh, Zazaki Roshi. Uh, mm -hmm. I was close to the to the principles of Zen, and then when I came to become to known to Pauline. Her dad, her father also had been into Zen a lot. Mm. And uh, actually there was a kind of a connection uh, in the Zen, Zen spirit. And that was uh, that was one side. And the other side was that uh, Pauline always had been a very charismatic person. 
and started to follow the energetics on a just just more higher plane mm -hmm. so she got uh very interested into mm -hmm. the multi-dimensional aspects of shiatsu and also mm -hmm. the anti-pathogenic aspects of shiatsu so mm -hmm. not to follow the symptoms by themselves but also to follow the the energetics beyond the symptoms so let's say the the uh, energetic potentials of the person mm -hmm. of the relation of each person and each client to the world and to nature and to diet and to family and to relationships and to any aspects in life that was very interesting for me interesting for me um especially because that was beyond all the symptoms and the issues and the diseases. Wonderful. So what's the, your topics for the uh, gathering? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I really yes. would uh, would like to, to step into the energetics by themselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the higher frequencies and shiatsu, and about intuition and about um, receiving images in shiatsu. So, for instance, I always like to teach about the hara, the mm -hmm. hara diagnosis, and how to deal with the the images and the hara diagnosis because it's more than only um, uh, kyojitsu itself, but it's more like the multidimensional aspects which tell us a lot about the clients, a lot about the people, about their lives, how they're dealing with lives. Uh -huh. That's one aspect I want to really share with uh, the people. And, Wonderful. That's great. And another aspect I would like to share is uh, uh -huh. uh, how we uh, really not try to fix a person or mm -hmm. to heal or treat a person but just to meet life itself how life expresses itself through the people through mankind and how we explore that not only in shiatsu practice but also in life in everyday life yes. and so this is very exciting for me oh that's wonderful fantastic yeah, I, Thank you. Uh, I'm really happy about this, and I hope uh, people are interested in it. Yes, uh, yes. And also uh, because uh, uh, not only the we as Shiatsu practitioners uh, uh, have some, a lot of exciting uh, experiences in that, but also <laughs> our clients it, themselves, they can really explore how they are dealing with life, you know. My idea uh, with the shiatsu session is not only that the person has to feel better after a session, mm -hmm. but also a person just to feel itself, not feeling better or worse, but just mm -hmm. feel yeah. themselves and feel life and feel how I can have really uh, any option in life no matter whether I have diseases or symptoms. So it goes just beyond symptoms, beyond diseases, and about the mystery of life itself. Fantastic! That's great! Yeah, so I'm very happy to share that with you. Yes. So if you're interested, just uh, join in December 17th, and I'd be happy to meet you there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Kimi-san. Thank you all. Thank you.